We're going to work a little bit on our brine for the turkey. I'm going to start it now because it needs to be completely cooled off to be able to put the turkey into it. So I have, this is how I do it. You know, everybody does it different. So I don't know. I'll just share with you guys the way that I do it. It may seem odd or not correct, but it's the way I do it every year. Um, I have a pot of water I'm going to bring to a boil and my brine and blend. I need to add two cups of that to my water. Whoa. Okay, so it's the whole container. There we go. So I'm just going to let that boil a little bit. Well, come up to a boil and then let it boil for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or something. And then I'm going to take it off the burner and set it aside until later on when it has completely cooled down. Then I'll show you guys the next step with that. Basically, we're making some flavored water to soak the turkey in. The brine is done, and I just have it set aside, and later on tonight, probably around 8 or so, I'll do the next step with that. So here's what I did with the turkey. I just cleaned it all out, took all the stuff out that don't need to be in there. You're going to need lots of ice for this. And I poured my brine in, and then I added cold water the rest of the way, and I added two bags of ice cubes, because you need to keep your, you know, turkey cold. And that's just going to soak for 24 hours, and I'm going to keep adding ice to it and making sure it's nice and cold. I just put the turkey in the oven. Ta-da! I just took the turkey out of the brine, put it in the pan, and I put salt and pepper on top, and then I just put um, slices of butter underneath the skin. And that's it. Just popped it in the oven. There's the turkey! I'm starting the stuffing and I cut up a half of a sweet onion, one Asian pear, and one Cortland apple. And I just put some butter in my frying pan and I'm going to saute this stuff. Alright, these have been going for a little bit and everything looks nice and tender. And we're going to add some cranberries. Usually I would add raisins, but I am all out. I'm just going to let that cook for a little bit longer. Haha, I found some. They were in the fridge. We like a lot of raisins in it, so I'm going to put them all in. So I'm just going to let that go for like a minute and then, then take it off the heat. Alright, so here's our stuffing mixture. Our bread and seasoning. And I just put hot water into it, boiling water. And a couple slices of butter. So I'm going to add this mixture to it. So I'm going to put you guys down so that I can. 
There we go. Now we got all that good stuff in there. Actually, we should be mixing this with a fork so that we don't clump all our stuffing together into a big, well, clump. <laughs> so let me get this all mixed up. All right, that's good to go. Doesn't it look pretty? All that good stuff in it? And then there's another step to it, but we don't do that till tomorrow. So I'll show you guys that when I do it. Gonna make the dip for the potato chips. It's just one 16 ounce container of sour cream. And you just mix it with one envelope of Lipton iron soup mix. It's very good. Here we go, simple as could be. On the box of it, it actually has the recipe for it, and it's just the mix and sour cream. So I'm going to cover that. It has to be refrigerated. And tomorrow morning, it will be all set. This is the other version of the stuffing that I'm making. It's the same exact thing, except for I added hamburger to this one. Dave likes his stuffing with hamburger, and um, a lot of other people don't, so... I just made two separate ones. I bet Marisa will like this, babe. The one with the hamburger. Alright, guys. This is how I finish off the stuffing. This is cinnamon applesauce. And I actually pour that right on top. Not too much, but um, a decent layer. There we go. And that's it. And I put it in the oven and just keep it warm. You can bake it too. Um, I would do 350 for like 20 minutes. We're going to make, well, we're going to mix up the insides for the baked apples. This is one part of it. I'm going to use cinnamon raisin granola. You can use any kind you want. We're going to add some extra raisins to it. There's not that many in the granola. And I just have this Ziploc bag here and I'm mixing it all in. I have about 15 apples to do, so I want quite a bit. So here's what I have. What is this? Let's see. Mm, maybe about two cups. And we're going to add a big old scoop of brown sugar. Big old scoop. <laughs> That's how's that for a measurement. Big old scoop. Actually, I think we need another one. And of course, I don't know what my problem is with caramel, but I'm always telling you guys I forgot the caramel, and I forgot it again. So, you know, that's that. Um, a handful of raisins right in our bag. Actually, I'm just going to add the rest of these. There's not many in there. You can do this with oatmeal, too, instead of granola, which, you know, I mean, it's pretty much, well, it's similar. So that's our bag of good stuff. I'm just going to close it up and mix it all up. Now you can add all this, you know, one by one to each apple, which is absolutely fine. That's the way that I used to do it. But, 
it gets mixed in better this way. Of course, I just put a hole in the bag. Ay, ay, ay. I'm gonna put a piece of freaking tape over it. How do you like that? We know how to do things around here. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I, I just feel like it gets mixed up better this way and every apple gets, you know, pretty much the same mixture. So that is pretty much it for the insides of the apple. So I'm working on the apples now. I'll show you guys what I do. These are Cortland apples. And they look at how pretty they are. They're so like white inside. There's my bowl of insides. So I just take my apple and I just cut a little bit off of the top like that. I'm going to take my spoon. If you had a grapefruit spoon, it would work really good. I used to have some, and I don't anymore. Grapefruit spoons have little, like, it's almost like a fork at the tip of it. And then we just we'll take some of the apple out. You can leave as much as you want around, around the edges, you know, around the sides. But you got to get in there and get the seeds and the core out. And make a mess while you're doing it. Oops, I get it on you guys. <laughs> uh. Make sure you don't punch a hole through it because we got to put stuff on the inside. And there we go. It's like an apple cup. So I'm going to do that to uh, about 15 of them and then I'll show you guys the next step. Next step, I got them all cored out and made a nice little hole for the, the, the stuff. Jeez, can't even talk. For the good stuff. So we're just going to take, I don't know, this much. I'm going to put that into each one. Can you open that for me? So actually, you know what? I think we're going to take half of that butter, actually. Because, like a big chunk of butter. yeah, it's too much. We're going to put, we're going to put half of it. Yeah. And then we're going to take some of our granola raisin goodness mix. <laughs> oh, and brown sugar. No. Erase that. <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to take our apple pie spice. I haven't made these in a long time. I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. So, apple pie spice or cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice, whatever. We're going to sprinkle that on the apple. I want to do that before we put the granola in so that we get some of it on the inside of the apple. There we go. Now we can put our good stuff inside. Oh, put some on the floor too, apparently. That, like that. I'm gonna take half of one of those half a slices and stick that right on top. Now, I forgot the caramel, so we don't have any, but when these got out of the oven, that's what I would do is put caramel on top of them. But that's okay. I'm going to finish doing this. All done. 
Look at the goodness. <laughs> now I'm going to put them in the oven at 350 for... Hmm. I'm going to check them in 12 minutes. Alright, I'll show you guys what I do with the acorn squash. I use them for soup bowls. So, on the bottom, well, this one's fine. One side is, but the other side is pointy and won't sit straight or sit, you know, flat. So I just slice a little bit off until I get a flat surface on it and it will stand up fine. And then I just scoop the insides out. I'm going to do that and then I'll show you guys what I do next. And I have the acorn squash in here. And there's our squash bowls. Those ones need to go in a little bit longer. 